Welcome to another episode of Eberhard Outdoors. Um, this uh, late summer slash fall deer season, I decided to do a corn video, well, stalking corn. The weather didn't really cooperate. The day that I uh, did stalk corn, had a nice little drizzle rain on and off, a little bit of wind, but not enough. But I still walked some corn. I had a 40 acre cornfield that I walked and I uh, saw, so, I don't know, half a dozen deer probably. Uh, I actually got to film something that was kind of rare. I had uh, looked down one row and there was a doe standing about 20 yards, I don't know, 15, 20 yards down the row, probably 20, and she was facing away from me, and I got to actually watch her bed down on camera. So that was kind of cool. Uh, with my tremor, the camera was shaking a little bit, so you guys just have to put up with that, I guess. That's just the way it is. But stepped in another row, had a doe and a fawn spook. I made a little noise going through the rows, and it wasn't windy enough, and it wasn't raining hard enough to mask my noise. But I still got some deer, so you guys could kind of see how how stalking corn is done. And I've shot quite a few does, especially uh, stalking corn, and a couple couple smaller subordinate bucks, you know, year and a half, two and a half year olds. Um, and then I also before before it was actually um, dry enough to stalk, I also did a video in September when the corn was a little bit greener. And when the corn is green, the leaves stick straight out, so you can't see down the rows. So I just did that as an example, because a lot of states have early September, some even have August openers. And you can't stalk corn that time of year, because the, the leaves on the corn are sticking straight out to the sides, and you can't see down the rows. You have to wait till the corn browns up and the, the leaves fall down, straight down, so you can see down the rows. Uh, also, you couldn't shoot, even if you did see a deer... Um, you couldn't shoot through the leaves because they'd deflect your arrow. I mean, that just wouldn't be an ethical thing to do. This is going to be a quick video on hunting corn and that you can't hunt corn if you have September seasons. Um, I'm in Michigan. Our season opens October 1. Most of the corn is pretty ripe by that point in time and most of the leaves are brown and they're actually dangling straight down as opposed to in September when the leaves are green and they're sticking straight out from the stalks so you can't see down the rows. There's the row and that's what you see. You can see five or ten yards maybe. And I'm looking down this direction. Same way. There's the row. And it's just a bunch of leaves, and you have no visual whatsoever. Step into the next row. Now this one's not quite as bad. I can see maybe 15 yards down that row. But this direction? No, can't. It's just too much. Too much leaves. And it'd be almost impossible to sneak up close enough to get a shot. I mean, the wind would definitely make a difference and help, but it'd be really hard to get up tight with this much foliage sticking straight out from the side of the stalks. And again, just stepped into the next row, and it's just solid stalks, solid leaves. Once this stuff browns up, those will die and they'll just dangle straight down so you'll have a lot longer visual. So in states where you have September openers, you know, as much as I love to stalk corn, you just don't have a visual in September. So keep that in mind. This video on stalking corn is uh, works great once the stalks are low. 
but when you are in stocks and everything is straight to the side, it just doesn't work. Corn fields are awesome. They make for some great hunting if you know how to hunt corn and around corn and in corn and tractor, you know, if you're on water pivots, hunting the pivot, pivot trails. Hunting corn is awesome because you can hunt standing corn and it doesn't interfere whatsoever with all of your other hunting locations once the corn is down. You're not making any intrusions into your typical timber or swamps once the corn's cut and the deer not bedding in it anymore. But I filmed it and then I filmed in that same field um, probably three weeks later. So the the last two clips on this are in the same field i wasn't really looking for deer i was just showing the difference between stalking or attempting to stalk corn in early september versus doing it in october when you can actually see down the road so that's the difference between the corn stalks being drooped and being green you can see a long ways down the rows Once the corn is ripe, you can see all the leaves are drooping down. That's when you want to actually hunt standing corn. Also, it's best hunted after there's hunting pressure. That forces more deer into it because it forces more deer into dense security bedding areas, which corn is. So I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I do show in my arms having a, a cornfield camel suit and uh, typically I wear a sunlock suit underneath that uh, corn camo um, and that corn camo is washed in scent free detergent and dried before I use it every single time. I would never use it twice without washing it between between hunts because I'm using it as an exterior. Scent control is really important stalking corn because uh, the deer could be any place so you're going to have deer downwind of you at some point if you do it often enough and uh, with scent lock I don't pay any attention to wind because I know how to do it correctly a lot of people have used scent lock and don't do it correctly therefore you know they still have to pay attention to the wind um, and just as a little side note I uh, scent lock is making a Johnny Burt signature scent lock suit this year it's going to be out I don't know, probably sometime in July. Uh, it's going to be primarily designed for saddle hunting. It's going to have knee pads incorporated into the pants. Pocket designs are going to be different. Collar is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be lightly insulated. It's going to be for hunting the rut phases. So it's going to be 25 to 45 degree suit. Um, and it's going to be a, a heavier fleece exterior. It's going to have a polyurethane membrane in it. So it's going to be a wind stop. Uh, it's not going to be waterproof. I mean, there's the seams are not taped, so that's the only thing making it not waterproof. But the membrane is waterproof, so it would have to rain very, very hard for you to get wet. Basically, it'd have to rain hard enough for the water to get through the seams. That's the only place it would potentially leak, is at the seams. And keep in mind, with a polyurethane membrane, that's in all of the fabric. So when the fabrics are overlapped and stitched, you got two waterproof pieces of fabric stitched, so it takes a lot of rain to get through that. So it's it's pretty dang close to being waterproof, even in a pretty decent rain. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this corn video. It's a lot of fun hunting corn. Uh, it's a good good thing to do during the October lull, especially when you really should stay out of the woods, stay out of your rut phase locations, because you're not interrupting anything. Uh, I mentioned that during the video, but I just want to reiterate that. Um, if you're bored, go stalk some corn. It'll also teach you to be patient. You gotta be very patient when you're stalking corn. Um, the windier it is or the harder it's raining, the less patient you have to be. Um, but the day that I did this, I still could have shot deer. And there's no way I would have actually went hunting in corn on a day that calm. I did that strictly for you guys for the video. Uh, it was definitely too calm to be out there trying to kill a deer, but I could have. It, it still would have worked out. 
Uh, but anyway, thank you, and uh, if you like it, hey, subscribe to Eberhard Outdoors. Appreciate it. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Eberhard Outdoors. In this one, I'm going to try to find a couple of deer bedded in the corn rows because uh, basically this is going to be a video on stalking corn, how to do it. Uh, and keep in mind, it has to be a windy day or a rainy day. Rained here a few minutes ago. I uh, got 15, 16 mile an hour winds, gusts up to 22 miles per hour. So uh, today's a decent day. I usually like it to be winds 20 to 30, but uh, I'm not gonna keep prolonging this video because if it gets into pre-rut, I'm not gonna take the time to do this video. So we're gonna see how it works today. I'll just have to be cautious, a little more cautious than normal going through the corn and wait for the gusts before I make my movements. And hope it rains a little more so the corn gets a little bit wet. The wetter the corn is, the less likely of it making any noise. That's what the wind is for as well. It masks your noise going through the corn stalks. But I'm gonna show how you, how you peek through the rows, look down the row, uh, you, then you put your foot, if there's nothing in the row, you kind of scan in front of you in the rows in front of you a little bit. Or then you step on a, one of the corn stalks and push it to the side and you step through that spot and then you do the same thing. You look into the, you stick your head in the next row, look down both directions and you move on. You just keep moving until you go through the cornfield. So obviously you're going perpendicular to the corn rows. Now when you're stalking corn, it depends a lot, you know, how far down the corn rows you go every time you make a sweep through the corn. It depends on how the corn is is uh, planted actually so if the corn rows are if it's level ground and it's uh, you know the corn has been properly fertilized and they've killed the weeds in it you know there's often times you can see 40 50 yards to each side down the rows uh, if there's weeds in it and uh, you know and it's hilly a lot of times you have to you know you may go where you can only see 20 to even maybe you know 30 to 20 yards down each direction so that dictates once you pass through the corn how far you go down before you make the pass the next time so let's say let's say you can see 30 30 yards in each direction you'd start about 40 yards because typically a deer is not going to be bedded on the edge they're going to be in it a little bit you'd start 40 yards from one end and you make a pass and you try to just stay perfectly perpendicular and then if you can see 30 yards each direction once you get through that pass you've seen 30 yards that next direction so you'd move 60 yards down the field and then you'd move back through the other direction so now you can see 30 yards the direction up to where it was 30 from before and you can th see 30 the other direction which you haven't looked down that side before so basically, every time you go through the corn, you're gonna go 60, 60 yards down and make another pass. If you can see 50 yards, then you'd go 100 yards down because you wanna, you've already seen 50, so you, now you wanna see the next 50. And scent control is a big, big deal because when you're stalking through corn, obviously 50% of the deer on average are gonna be downwind of you. So scent control is a big, big deal. This here is a waterproof uh, scent lock suit so I'm not worried about my scent whatsoever. Uh, but I also, in the past, I, I, I typically will wear this. But this is a corn camo. Now this isn't made anymore, but this was, uh, this was something that was out of, yeah, probably 20 years ago. And it had about a three year lifespan and then they weren't selling much of it anymore. So this is what I typically use for stocking corn. And I keep this washed in scent free detergent and then I wear a scent lock suit underneath it. Um, you know, so that I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm staying scent free. I also, this is a Rivers West waterproof hat. It's called a radial hat. I had it in my uh, uh, rainwear segment. And this is also washed in scent free detergent and kept in an airtight container. So this is scent free as well. Gloves are washed also in scent free detergent. So everything is scent free. Uh, the Sunlock suit has been deabsorbed in the dryer several times. I'm not going to be carrying a bow because I have no plans on shooting anything. I don't want to shoot a deer right now. Um, but I'm going to be carrying the camera, which will replicate. Basically, it's going to take place of carrying a bow. Because when you're stalking corn, I usually shoulder my bow. 
I, I can put my arm through between the actual limbs and the string and put it over my shoulder. But you don't walk through a cornfield ready to shoot. You know, you're just looking for deer. Once you see a deer, then you will, okay, let's say you're going through a row and you see a deer 20 yards down the row. Well, you don't want to shoot 20 yards because you're going to be shooting through corn, corn leaves and stuff like that. So what you do is you'll back up four, five, six rows. You count the rows, you back up the way from the direction you came. And then you, if you want a 10 yard or a five yard shot, you walk, you know, 10 or 15 yards, the direction the deer is. And then you very slowly walk through the corn to the row the deer was in, counting those rows again. And then once you get one or two rows away, then you knock an arrow and you slowly go through those last two rows and you slowly peek into the row the deer is in and you have to wait until the deer's attention is focused someplace else before you make any shot movements. And as soon as it is, you just lean, you can just lean forward, draw your bow and take a shot when the deer's attention is elsewhere. Uh, now obviously the deer is gonna be bedded. It's always gonna be in a bedded position. So you have to know how to shoot a deer bedded because the deer bedded, the vitals are kind of laying a little bit differently than when a deer is standing. So you have to know your angles and stuff when you're shooting a deer um, in a, in a cornfield. And I've shot, uh, my best time I ever did was back, uh, it was either the late seventies, early eighties. I shot, I shot three does in a cornfield stalking corn in about two to three hour time frame. And I probably could have shot more. I was just like, that's all I needed at the time. I had three dough permits and that's what I filled. So um, corn, stalking corn is really cool because it's something you can do that does not affect all of your other timber locations. So let's say you've got some property and you've got some really phenomenal rut phase locations at scrape areas or at master fruit trees, or you got a great a natural timber bedding area with marshes and swamps or whatever you got like that and you don't want to disrupt those with your intrusions you know during October you want to save those locations for the rut phases so if you got a standing cornfield in on the property you know and it's typically it should be at least 20 acres to hold any amount of deer uh, but if you have standing corn it's a great thing to do to stalk the corn it's fun you gotta wait again you gotta wait for a windy or a rainy day it's fun and it doesn't impede on your rut phase locations so you know you can do this as much as you want and basically it doesn't hurt any of your rut phase locations in the timber because you're not going in the timber you shoot a deer in the corn i've never shot a deer in the corn that didn't die in the corn i've never had it leave the corn and die in timber so once the corn is cut, all of your, which is typically going to be mid to late October, sometimes as early as in November, depending on the moisture. Um, but anyway, once the corn gets cut, all of your rut phase locations in the timber are going to actually be better. You've totally left them alone. You haven't altered any doe traffic. And also the deer now, there's going to be the, whatever deer were bedded in the corn are now going to be bedded in the timber. So the deer are more consolidated. You haven't you haven't interrupted any of the doe, any of the doe traffic at your rut phase locations, so they're still going to be coming in in the daytime, which is going to mean the bucks coming in to pursue them is going to be are going to be coming in in the daytime. So everything uh, everything is perfect. So stalking corn is a great way to kill some time. It doesn't impede on your timber locations. Uh, it's phenomenal if you just want to fill the freezer. Uh, it's not that difficult to shoot a doe in corn. Obviously, if you're targeting mature bucks, strictly because there's, you know, the mature buck to doe ratio in a heavily pressured state like Michigan is, you know, probably 30 or 40 to one, if not higher for a mature buck versus, you know, subordinate bucks, fawns and does. So uh, your odds of getting opportunities of mature bucks in the corn are going to be slim. It can happen, but it's going to be slim. So uh, stocking corn is a great way kill some time it's a great way to learn how to be patient because you have to stalk corn very slowly even though it's windy rainy whatever the situation you still have to do it slow and you have to stay covered I like to wear now this here camo this is some old real tree camo this here is a kind of a corn colored camouflage so it's not going to be too bad but you don't want to wear anything that's dark because as soon as you step in 
you know, even leaning your head, if you got a dark hat or dark upper body clothing, you know, and a deer is looking in that, just happens to be facing that direction when she's bedded or he's bedded, um, you know, there's more, more apt to get picked. But if you've got clothing on that kind of matches the color of the corn, keep in mind the corn's going to be moving around. So your odds of getting picked are going to be a lot less because you blend in with the colors. Um, I'm positive I'm forgetting a lot of stuff, but as I go through the corn, you're going to see how I step on the corn to move it to the side to slide your body through. Um, it sure isn't as windy as I'd like it to be, but I'm going to hope I can still... I know there's deer in this cornfield. There's no doubt in my mind. Uh, so I know there's deer here. I just hope I can get one on on camera, one or two on camera, to show you kind of what it's like and how you back up and move closer and, and then move in for the for the kill. And I've shot several bucks this way. They've been small, you know, two and a half year old bucks. Uh, but again, it was it was during a period of time when I was targeting, you know, a year and a half and even two and a half year old bucks. So I've shot quite a few does this way. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It really is. And, and also keep in mind, if you're out west, uh, you know, deer are very apt to bed in the corn. But out west, where, you know, your Kansas is, your Iowa's, even your Indiana's, Ohio's, southern Illinois, cornfields can be a couple hundred acres. So when, and there's lots of them. So when you're in areas like that, stalking corn, you're gonna to have to stalk a lot of corn to get shot opportunities because the cornfields are so large and so vast. When you get up into the Northeast, cornfields, you know, it's pretty rare to get a cornfield much over 40 acres. So 40, 40, 60, 80 acres is just absolutely perfect for stalking corn. And it takes time. So it's something you wanna do in the middle of the day when the deer are going to be bedded. You wanna do it sometime after 9.30 or 10 in the morning until four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon when they get up and start moving around. So uh, it's a great way to hunt, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I hope I can get some footage to share with you. Thanks. Okay, once you've looked down the rows, what you need to do is put your boot against one of the stalks, kick it to the side, and step through. Let me peek through the next row. Down the row, both directions. Once you know there's nothing down the row, you take your leg, foot, put it against the corn stalk base, and you just take your knee and push it to the side and step through the row. Stick your head through the next row. both directions and then you step into that crawl. Same thing, put your knee, push it to the side, put your head in the row, step down the row. And then push the stock to the side and step forward. You also want to look ahead. So you kind of want to look ahead. You can't see very far because the rows are right in front of you and they're going the opposite direction. So you can't see very far, but just keep your eyes open for something. Once in a while you'll see one bedded in front of you, which will be usually five to 10 yards max. So we're gonna do some stalking here and see what happens.
when you've got gusty winds, you need to wait for the gusts. Right now it's calm. Tassels are barely moving. So you gotta wait for the gusts. Also, if there's natural gaps between stalks and they're just a couple feet one way or the other, once you've cleaned that row and looked, it's getting a little windier now. Once you clean that row and look, step over and step through the natural opening because it's going to be less movements, less noise. Typically that's not the case. Typically you have to go between the two stalks. You don't have gaps where there's no stalk. But when you do, take advantage of it. It allows you to get away with more movements. And when you place your feet don't hit it hard like a stomp because they can feel that vibration in the ground if they're in front of you a ways. Now the stalks are moving so we'll move forward. Okay, we've just made one pass through this field. And this field's not square. There's some timber here that comes out to a point over there. So there was one point where I was right next to the head rows, but I could still see to my right about 35 to 40 yards. And on average, I, that's about what I could see. It's about 35 yards, I would say, to my right. So now that I'm through the corn, I'm gonna move 70 yards up the side and go back through which means I'll be able to see the other 35 yards again to my right and then I'll be able to see 35 yards to my left and then once I go through there I'll move depending on how far I can see to my left I'll move up the field whatever double the distance is and go back through again uh, also it's important what kind of boots you wear I'm wearing some old boots with just basic tire tread. Now I'm, I'm kind of fortunate because Michigan has sandy soil as you can see here. So it doesn't get really muddy. We've had a rain recently and uh, if you if you're in south of if you're in states where the soil is real rich where you got lots of big bucks because there's a lot of minerals in the soil and you have better crop yields per acre. Um, don't wear cleated boots. Wear boots with as smooth a soles as you can get because the mud will, after, especially if you're doing it during or after a rain, uh, the mud will just cake up on your boots. So, uh, if, if, on sandy soil it's not that big a deal. It doesn't cake up that bad. You can just kick it off real easy, but when you got uh, big cleats, uh, it's tough to kick the mud off, so keep that in mind. And also on this side of the field, because it's exposed, There's no trees blocking the wind. Uh, corn's a lot noisier over here. You can see the stalks are moving all the time. When I started, I had the trees blocking the part of the corn I started in, so corn was a little more still. So I can go a little bit faster on this run. Sometimes you may be able to see down the row 50 or 60 yards, but if the average distance you can see is 30, when you come back through, you only go 60 yards up the field to cover the other 30, not 100, because there's going to be some parts of the field then that you don't get covered. When you get to a location like this, where you've got natural openings in the corn, take those because they're going to be a little quieter.
thank you. And uh, if you like it, hey, subscribe to Eberhard Outdoors. Appreciate it. Thank you.